Even if you've been on a Caribbean cruise before, an Alaska cruise is quite different. In fact, there are many things that I wish I knew before my Alaska cruise. In this video, I'm gonna share with you 30 tips that all first time Alaska cruisers need to know. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, even though we had been on over 30 cruises, I can tell you that our Alaska cruise was very different from all of the rest. And by the way, it was absolutely amazing. But there are some things that you're going to want to know. Everything from itineraries to packing to choosing the right cabin to which souvenirs to buy when you're in the Alaskan ports. Now my aim is to answer all or at least many of the questions that you may have before taking your Alaska cruise and share some tips and tricks along the way. Now before I get started I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, let's talk about something that people rarely talk about. What is the best Alaska itinerary if you are concerned about seasickness? Now you have a variety of itineraries that you could take for your Alaska cruise. Now the most common ones are either leaving round trip from Seattle or Vancouver or going north or south one way from Vancouver to Whittier or Seward, Alaska near Anchorage. Now I didn't know this before my first Alaska cruise and I think that we did end up just getting lucky, but if you are leaving from Vancouver, you're going to be going into the Inside Passage. Those waters are going to be usually calmer. In contrast, if you leave from Seattle, you're going to be going into the open water of the Pacific Ocean, which does tend to be more choppy. Now it doesn't mean that that itinerary leaving from Seattle is bad, but when you do go through the Inside Passage, you do have that natural barrier to the open sea that just makes those first few hours or so a little bit more pleasant. Now, a lot of people wonder, should they do a north or a southbound Alaska cruise? This way they can get a little further into Alaska, which definitely has its benefits, or should they take a round trip sailing? Now, I think if it is your first Alaska cruise, it is likely just easier and more convenient to take a round trip sailing. Now, one of the benefits to those north or southbound sailings is the fact that you are going to see more of Alaska. That definitely is something really good. Now, sometimes those north or southbound sailings are a little bit cheaper than the round trip Alaska sailings, but you are spending a little bit more on the air and potentially on a hotel pre or post cruise. Okay, moving on to the cabins. Should you book a starboard or a port side cabin? Now, if you are booking a round trip Alaska cruise, it doesn't really matter because you'll get to see both sides during your cruise. However, if you're booking a one-way northbound cruise, you will want to have a cabin ideally on the starboard side. And if you are booking a southbound cruise, you will have the best scenery by booking on the port side. Get a balcony cabin. Now, I had heard this advice before, but until you see that scenery of Alaska, you just cannot imagine. So having the balcony, I can tell you I used the balcony and that view more on my Alaska cruise than I did on my Mediterranean cruise and on any of my Caribbean cruises. So I definitely think that it is worth it. However, if you wanna save money on your Alaska cruise, there is absolutely nothing wrong with getting an ocean view cabin. You'll actually benefit from still seeing all of that scenery. Even you'll be closer to the water line, so you'll actually be able to see potentially the marine life. It is amazing to see otters that are on little icebergs and whales. It really is something else. And otherwise, get an interior cabin. And you know what? You do not need to spend that much time in your cabin. There are plenty of places on the open deck, on the promenade deck, even in lounges and restaurants where you can still enjoy that spectacular view. Shore excursion tips. Make sure that you book your shore excursions early. Now, Alaska for many is really a bucket list cruise. Many people are only going to do it once. So those really special excursions, like for instance, a helicopter going up to the glacier, they do sell out quickly. If this is something that you really want to do, make sure that you book that as soon as you possibly can. Now, something else to know and expect is that Alaska shore excursions do cost more. Now I have a little bit of advice 
Don't feel like you have to do a pricey excursion in every port. If there really is something that you absolutely want to do, maybe it's whale watching, maybe it's dog sledding, spend the money on that and save elsewhere. For instance, in Ketchikan, you can walk around the cruise port and it is really interesting. There's Creek Street to visit. There are a lot of things and I'm saying Ketchikan, but there are the other ports as well, including Skagway, that there's a lot to do and see and a lot of history right there within walking distance of the cruise port. Now you can also save money on excursions. One way is to use your onboard credit that you might have in your account book your shore excursions with that. You can also DIY some of your own excursions research and you can go hiking on your own. You don't need to do that with a tour company in some of the different cruise ports. And you can also book a third party excursion if you do find the cruise line excursions a little bit pricey. Just look to make sure that this is a reputable company, that you do see the reviews and that you see a guarantee to get you back to the cruise ship on time. Be prepared for the time change and for the long days. Now, I have to say I was prepared for the time change. The way that we got prepared for the time change, I definitely recommend that you do this, is we arrived three days before our cruise in Vancouver and we decided to visit Vancouver during that time and make it a little land trip before our cruise. We loved Vancouver. I highly recommend it. But even if you don't want to go in three days before, go in one or two days before. You may have to adjust to a time change like I did. I live in the Eastern time zone. So it was a three hour time difference to Vancouver. We stayed there for three days. So we got acclimated to that. Then when we got to Alaska, there was an additional one hour time change. If you don't plan to get there at least one day early, you're just not even going to have time to acclimate and it's going to take your body a couple of days and it will impact your cruise. Now the long days, that was something I truthfully wasn't prepared for. I was up every morning by a quarter to five. It was already light out. We were in a balcony and I like to sleep with the blinds open and it was an incredible view. So I don't regret that. But as well, the sunset, it must have been close to 11 o'clock at night. And that was in the month of May. So if you go later in the season, if you go for instance, around the third week of June, you're gonna hit summer solstice where there is a full 20 hours of daylight. Now, of course, you're gonna to wanna to get a good night's sleep every night and you are going to need it on an Alaska cruise. So it is a good idea to bring a sleep mask to help with that a little bit. Packing tips. Now I have an entire video on packing, so I am gonna leave an Alaska playlist at the end of this video. However, these are a few things that you need to know. Firstly, what to pack layer. The weather does vary in Alaska, so you wanna be prepared by having a t-shirt, having a long sleeve shirt or a fleece, having a light puffer jacket, almost at any time, but if you are heading there in the middle of summer, let's say at the end of June, all the way through July and mid August, it is going to be warmer. So just take a look at the weather forecast before you go and judge accordingly. Now it's always a good idea to have a hat and gloves, especially for those glacier viewing days when it is going to be cooler and the early mornings tend to be cool as well. Now on top of that, something that you might not think about is that it rains a lot in Alaska. Actually, Alaska is part of the Tongass National Forest, which is the largest temperate rainforest in the world. And yes, it is likely that you'll have rain, whether it's light rain and drizzle or even heavy rains during your cruise. Now, of course, that's not going to stop you. So what you'll wanna do is pack a light rain jacket or a poncho and consider packing waterproof shoes and pants in particular, if you plan to go on a hike. Now, some things that you don't wanna to forget to pack for your Alaska cruise include sunscreen, bug spray, polarized sunglasses, and binoculars. Now, you'd think that one pair of binoculars is enough, but you don't wanna fight about these. So I even suggest bring one pair of binoculars per person. Oh, and by the way, if you're a bit of an amateur photographer, bring your camera. This is one time that an iPhone just doesn't do it justice. Now, by the way, if you're planning an Alaskan cruise and you are trying to keep organized, I do have the Lifewall Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner. Now, the Lifewall Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner is a 47-page downloadable printable cruise planner that you can use from the moment you book your cruise all the way through disembarkation. Now it includes packing lists, cruise embarkation day forms, shore excursion planning forms, and more. If you are interested in seeing what is included 
in the LifeWell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner. I will leave all of the information linked down below in case you are interested in checking it out. Now you might be wondering when is the best time to cruise to Alaska? Now there's no one best month, but there might be a month that you prefer over another. Now the season goes generally from the beginning of May till the end of September, sometimes into early October. The warmest months in Alaska are usually late June, July, and August, but June and July are best for wildlife sightings. The shoulder season in May and September is your best bet for the best prices. May is the driest and the least rainy. We ended up going on our cruise in May and I have to say I absolutely loved it. Something that I never considered before my Alaska cruise is how the scenery is actually going to look different from early in the season to mid season to late in the season. So the benefit of going in May was that the mountains were still snow capped and the glaciers looked so crisp and clean and white. Now, if you want to see the Northern Lights, there are no guarantees, but your best bet is going to be in late September as the days get shorter and darker earlier. And by the way, Alaska is popular with people of all ages and in particular, multi-generational families and families in general with kids during the summer months. So if you want to avoid the busier time in the cruise ports, if you can sail in that shoulder season in the month of May, early June and September, that is going to be your best bet for a little bit quieter times. Take advantage of the onboard enrichment programs. Many cruise lines offer enrichment programs with lectures from naturalists, historians, and experts. Attend these sessions to gain a deeper understanding of Alaska's history, geology, and wildlife. The dress code. Now, even if you've been on a cruise before, something that you should know is Alaska is just a little bit more casual even on the cruise ship. So while you'll still have a dressy or a formal or a chic night, people do tend to dress a little bit less than they may on Caribbean or Mediterranean sailings. And even for the regular nights, you'll see that people may go to the main dining room in their jeans and their sweater that they wore during the day, just because especially on those days in port, it really is such an active itinerary. Now we found this to be the case, even though we were sailing on a relatively traditional cruise line, Holland America. However, if you're on Royal Caribbean, Carnival, or Norwegian Cruise Line, you'll find that it even skews a little bit more casual than that. And if you are sailing on a more traditional line like Cunard, you're going to find that it does remain quite traditional. Best tips for glacier viewing. Now, glacier viewing is probably the best part of an Alaska cruise. I was blown away. It was nothing like a sea day, which I don't know why I expected that, but that's what I had in mind. Now for your day of glacier viewing, you wanna make sure that you do have your binoculars, that you have your hat and gloves. It does tend to be cool on that day. Consider booking a balcony cabin so you do have that private viewing area. And as well, you can also scope out some of those best lookout spots early in the morning. Now don't forget to check back at different times of the day. The bow may be open, but you'll also see there are a lot of great spots on the promenade in an observation area on the cruise ship to view those glaciers. Now if you're in Glacier Bay, don't forget to listen out for the narration by the park rangers. They're going to tell you all sorts of information about Glacier Bay, but also what animals they might see, where to look, and they're going to be there to answer questions from passengers as well. Now, if you haven't already booked your cruise, you might be wondering what is the best ship or cruise line to book for your Alaska cruise? Well, the truth is there is no one size fits all, but there are some things you may prefer about one line and ship over another. Now, some things to look out for are choose a ship with spacious decks. This way you're gonna have optimal wildlife and glacier viewing. Consider a ship with naturalists and experts that are on board to enhance your understanding of the region. Look for a ship that has indoor areas for swimming or activities, especially if you have kids. Holland America and Princess have the most sailings to Glacier Bay. If that's something important to you, that is something to consider. And the vibe. And of course, this is really going to affect how much of a good time you have on your cruise. Now, if you like something relaxed and completely freestyle, take a look at some of the Norwegian cruise line ships. If you like more activities on the cruise ship, take a look at Royal Caribbean ships. If you like an upscale, almost zen-like experience, you may appreciate celebrity cruises. If you want Alaska activities that are brought right onto the cruise ship, I think that you'll love Princess. If you want 
want a more enrichment focused Alaska cruise, Holland America is a great choice as well. Now beyond those major cruise lines, there are other choices as well. If you want something more adventurous and a small ship, you may really enjoy UnCruise. And if you want a little bit of a luxury experience, in a smaller ship, then Seabourn is a great choice for you. Spa reservations. Now, while you'll definitely want to book your shore excursions early if possible, book your spa reservations early as well. These tend to be very popular and really book up, especially on sea days of an Alaska cruise. Thermal spa pass. If your cruise ship has a thermal spa, consider booking a thermal spa package for the week. I don't think you'll regret it. Just imagine those views. Join a roll call for your sailing, either on Facebook or Cruise Critic forums or another website forum. This is a good way to connect with other cruisers that are going to be on your ship to trade information and even potentially share some excursions together and save some money. Now, when it comes to the rain in Alaska and in ports, I do have a little bit of a tip for you. Make sure that you bring a waterproof backpack. So that will be very handy for excursions. But something else that you can do is bring a gallon size Ziploc bag. This way you can put any items that you really don't wanna get drenched in rain. It can happen. You can have that just in case. Now, something that really surprised me in Alaska was not only how beautiful the scenery is and honestly, no matter how many videos you watch or pictures that you see, it just doesn't do it justice, but it is actually that the air smells fresh. I don't know if it's a lack of pollution, but it was something that I definitely noticed. I found that I breathed better in Alaska. Now, by the way, if you've been to Alaska and you've noticed that, please let me know down in the comments below. Now, I'm a little bit all over the place in this video, but I just remembered this one and it is pretty important. Onboarding day, make sure that you book the earliest embarkation time possible. Now, even if you've taken a Caribbean cruise, it does take a little bit longer to board your cruise ship when you are heading to Alaska. Now, whether you board in Seattle or Vancouver, you can expect it to be about an hour or so before you board or longer. Now, Vancouver does have a reputation of being particularly long and chaotic. I can confirm it was like that on our cruise. I think it reminds me a little bit more of when you go to the airport and you have to go through security. So just keep that in mind. Be sure to pack an embarkation day bag with your first day essentials. Now this can include things like your medication, your valuables, anything that you might need for that first day. But I do have a little bit of a tip. Bring a change of clothes, something that you wanna wear to dinner later on in the evening. And this way you're not gonna to have to worry or stress if you're waiting on your luggage, that is already going to be there and you can change your clothes and freshen up when you are ready. Now, when you're in the Alaskan cruise ports, it's a good idea to try out some of the local restaurants or go to the local bars or just even pick up some of the local food. Now, a very popular place that I am told is actually owned by a local family is Tracy's Crab Shack in Juneau. And something that we really enjoyed was going to Skagway Brewing Company in Skagway. Now, when you're there, don't forget to try the Spruce Tip Ale. Now, when you're booking shore excursions, be sure to check the fitness levels and be mindful that it is not too strenuous. There are a lot of excursions that might be kayaking or hiking, and they could have certain physical requirements. Now, even some of the walking tours, we had found that some of them included walking on trails and there were some branches or some routes to step over. So just be mindful of your own physical activities because after all, you don't wanna go on an excursion and twist an ankle or fall down, it would have an impact on your cruise. What currency do they take in Alaska? Well, Alaska is part of the United States, so they do take the US dollar, and of course, they also take credit cards as well. Now, it is a good idea to have some cash with you, in particular, some fives and some tens, if you want to tip any of the tour guides, or even if you wanna buy some small souvenirs. Connect with the locals, ask your tour guides and other people that you meet in the towns for their recommendations. We ended up getting the recommendation to eat lunch at Skagway Brewery house from our tour guides in Skagway who told us that after work they would often hang out there. Now if you're like me you might like to shop a little bit when you're in port and honestly you are doing something good because you are supporting the local economy. Now there are a lot of things that you can buy in the Alaskan cruise ports. Now that of course includes a lot of Alaska merchandise from sweatshirts and t-shirts to baseball caps to Christmas ornaments. But beyond that, you could find handcrafted items and carvings made by native artists. You can also find some absolutely exquisite jewelry made of gold nuggets or jade. 
You can bring home some Alaskan smoked salmon, some Alaska art prints or photography, and something I never knew existed, birch syrup. Now I hope that this video was helpful. I'm gonna leave all of the information about the Lifeboat Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner linked down below in the description of this video, as well as a playlist at the end of this video of different Alaska videos that I think will be helpful if you are planning an Alaska cruise. Now I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know if this is your first time going on an Alaska cruise, or if you love it so much that you are a repeat Alaska cruiser. Please let me know down in the comments below. I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.